In these uncertain times, we are at a pivotal moment. 2024 in Bible prophecy. Here are four trends to watch for is more than just a sermon. It's a call to pay attention to the prophecies aligning with our world today. Every day we see signs from scriptures coming to life around us. As 2024 approaches, the importance of these prophecies grows. We can't ignore the signs. Trend number one, the rise of global unity and governance. As the world becomes more interconnected through technology, trade and geopolitics, we may see more attempts to form stronger global alliances and possibly even a move towards a more unified global governance system. Scripture references like Revelation 13 verses 7 and 8 speak of a world power that has authority over every tribe, people, language and nation. What you need to look for is a trend in the continuation of global unity and governance, preparing and priming the world stage for a significant prophetic figure, the Antichrist. This wave of integration is not just a mere coincidence, it's a vital step in laying down the groundwork for the emergence of the global leader that is to come, the Antichrist. As you witness the formation of alliances and unions of countries, it's crucial to remember that this is not mere geopolitics at play, but the manifestation of ancient prophecies. Scripture has long indicated that one man is prophesied to come and lead the world, wielding unparalleled influence and controlling a vast global system. Everything you observe in the world is interconnected. No event stands alone. Nothing exists in isolation. As you watch history unfold, remember, everything is interconnected. Every war, every rumor of war, each alliance and every disagreement are all part of God's prophetic timetable. The world is not in chaos. While you might be taken aback by current events, God isn't. All events are moving in line with God's prophetic timeline. While on earth, Jesus spoke of things to come, and the book of Revelation provided further insights. So, when you observe current world events or watch the news, always ask yourself, how does this relate to biblical prophecy? How does it connect to the return of our Lord? Nothing, absolutely nothing happens in isolation. Everything that happens is a part of God's prophetic timeline. Revelation 13 to 7 and it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. Here in Revelation 13, 7, such an influential figure would require an infrastructure that transcends borders and conventional systems. And here's where we see another trend to watch for, global economic systems and digital currencies. The rise of digital currencies has been meteoric. Calls are growing louder for the establishment of a global digital currency, streamlining transactions and creating a universally accepted economic system. This shift away from traditional physical cash isn't just about efficiency or security concerns. It's a reflection of the world's gradual movement towards unity in all sectors, including economy. A unified digital currency could, in essence, pave the way for this foretold leader to have an unprecedented grip on global commerce. As these trends continue to unfold in 2024 and beyond, it's essential to view them not just as isolated geopolitical or economic events, but as significant pieces fitting into the vast jigsaw puzzle of end-time prophecy. By observing these patterns, Believers can discern the times and prepare their hearts and minds for what lies ahead in the prophetic calendar. Trend number two, technological advances and the mark of the beast. If one were to step back a century or even two, the realms of science and technology as we know them today would appear almost alien. The strides we've taken in a relatively short span are nothing short of miraculous. From the inception of rudimentary machines to the sophisticated digital world we are deeply entrenched in today, mankind's technological journey has been a testimony to innovation, 
curiosity, and a relentless pursuit of the unknown. Revelation 13, 16, 17, And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Revelation 13, 16, 17 paints a picture that, for ages, was seen as a distant, almost ethereal prophecy. It speaks of an era where individuals will bear a mark on their right hand or their forehead. A mark that becomes the determiner of economic transactions. A prerequisite without which one cannot engage in the fundamental acts of buying or selling. Though unimaginable in yesteryears, today's rapid technological evolution makes this biblical imagery increasingly plausible. One cannot overlook the staggering pace at which technology is moving forward. Tasks and innovations that once took decades, if not centuries, to come to fruition are now realized in mere years or even months. We live in an era where dreams of yore are the realities of today. The impossibilities of the past, like a world system monitoring every transaction you partake in, have transformed into possibilities. Such a level of surveillance was unthinkable and technically implausible 200 years ago. However, it is today a reality. The infrastructure required for the level of power, control and surveillance that the Antichrist needs for Revelation 13 verses 13 and 17 to be realized is already in place. In 2024, anticipate this trend to persist. I recently logged into my car's app and was astounded to discover that it had tracked every single drive I had undertaken in the past three years. The duration of each drive, where I stopped, and the length of each stop. This experience underscored for me the depth of surveillance we are subjected to currently. The very infrastructure the Antichrist will leverage to dominate the world is being established around us. Given the pace of technological advancement, we can expect to inch closer and closer to the reality described in Revelation 13. Over the years, various scholars and theologians have made imaginative calculations to identify the Antichrist through his number. Six. 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 However, I must confess that no one truly knows the meaning of this number and name. Nonetheless, believers on earth during that time will undoubtedly understand it clearly. In the grand timeline of Bible prophecy and technology, as threads of biotech advancements, digital finance and individual surveillance interweave, a pattern emerges. A pattern that aligns eerily with the prophecy of the mark of the beast. As we navigate this technologically advanced age, it's crucial to observe, reflect and discern. Trend number three. Apostasy and the falling away from true faith. The caution for 2024. In recent times, we've witnessed tremors within the very foundation of faith that underpins Christianity. Paul's poignant words in 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, cautioning of a falling away or apostasy are proving more relevant today than ever. The term apostasy derived from the Greek word apostasia, carries a profound meaning that includes departure, falling away, defection, revolt. In 2 Thessalonians 2.3, it isn't merely about a casual departure. It signifies a vast number of people turning away from God. It's not just a few individuals or a minority. It's an unprecedented global rebellion against God. Are we not seeing this in our times? I've never witnessed anything like it. Over my lifetime, the world has undergone significant changes. I've observed a moral shift of biblical proportions. The world seems to hate what is holy and righteous while embracing sin and unholiness. There are churches today that openly permit pastors to live in sin, that celebrate and glorify unrighteousness. By 2024, you'll witness more of this great falling away. Across nations, there's an increasing number of backsliders in churches. 
The fervor many once had for the Lord has diminished. The love of many for the Lord has grown cold for the Lord. The church has crept into the world, and the world has crept into the church. Allow me to repeat this statement because it is a profound statement and a true statement. The church has crept into the world, and the world has crept into the church. It is your job as a believer to make sure you are not conformed to this world. As a believer, it's essential to ensure you aren't swayed by worldly influences. The world will try to mold you to its beliefs and ideologies, but your beliefs should align with the Word of God, the Bible. This world will try to make you accept things that God doesn't condone. It doesn't promote holy and righteous living, but endorses a doctrine of hedonism. The world pushes you toward immediate satisfaction and transient pleasures. The religion of this world is one of the flesh. It is one of indulgence of the flesh. It might make you feel you have the right to sin, to prioritize personal interests over others, or to continuously indulge in sin because it's pleasing. But remember, such influences will steer you further from God's teachings. There's a troubling trend emerging from the world and seeping into the church, where people claim, I am a Christian, but I don't follow the Bible. This assertion is contradictory. It's akin to saying, I'm a vegetarian, but I eat chicken and beef. Such ideas from the world infiltrating the church are concerning. You can't be a Christian and disregard the Bible. We are witnessing a significant departure from faith right in front of us. It's essential to recognize that many have already been led astray and many more are on the verge. Your devotion to God should be intentional. Your decision to follow Jesus must be a deliberate one. You need to consciously choose to tread the narrow path, for few find it. Even as we witness this great apostasy unfold, ensure it doesn't encompass you. Cling to your faith, adhere to sound doctrines, and stay true to the teachings of the Bible. 2024 beckons with promise, but it also brings challenges. The Church's responsibility is not just to guard against apostasy, but to actively promote sound doctrine, ensuring that the faith once delivered to the saints remains uncorrupted and undiluted. Trend number four, moral decay and shifts in societal values. An ominous trend for 2024. The fabric of society is woven by values, norms and morals that hold communities together. When these threads weaken or change direction, society inevitably undergoes transformation. As we approach 2024, the gradual shift away from traditional biblical teachings and values as described in Paul's second letter to Timothy, 2 Timothy 3 1 5, is becoming more evident. With selfishness, pride, blasphemy, and a loss of natural affection on the rise, it's imperative to acknowledge and address this moral decay. One of the most glaring signs of this shift is the alarming rise in selfishness. More than ever, we live in an era of me first. The biblical warning of men becoming lovers of themselves seems hauntingly relevant today. From husbands and wives who prioritize their desires above their families, to the celebrity pastor phenomenon, where the leader becomes more prominent than the teachings of Jesus Christ. The spotlight on self is blinding us to the needs of others. It is new religion that is forming. The religion of self and the religion of pleasure. The religion of pleasure isn't new. Fallen humanity has always been drawn to it. Today, many worship at the altar of pleasure. We live in an era dominated by pleasure seekers rather than God seekers, an era that embraces the mantra, eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. The religion of pleasure is really the worship of the flesh. We must be vigilant because our very nature is attracted to pleasure, including the fleeting delights in offers. None of us are immune to this allure. I am tired of Christians who attempt to pretend that there is no pleasure associated with sin. 
there is a pleasure that comes with sin. There is a pleasure that comes with sin that the fleshly man longs for. Don't let anyone lie to you into believing that there is no pleasure in sin. There's pleasure in fornication, in adultery, in sexual immorality. There's satisfaction in sowing discord, in seeking revenge. Drugs and alcohol too offer their own forms of pleasure. Sin, in its many forms, can be enticing. But before we continue, let me share a verse with you, 1 Timothy 5, 6. But she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. But she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. But she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. An ungodly person who is living their life for pleasure is alive, but is as good as dead since they are not living for God. The pleasure of sin never lasts. The pleasure of sin deceives because it never lasts. The pleasure of sin always attempts to make you want more and more and more. More and more the world is going to worship at the altar of pleasure in 2024. The religion of pleasure is selfish. It pushes you to put your sinful desires above the well-being and the future of your loved ones. Fall in love with your family. Put them before pleasure. Fall in love with your children. Put them before pleasure. Think about how your sin can destroy your family. Think about how your sin could cause a division in your family. Pleasure can pull you away from your responsibilities. It can pull you away from your duties as a husband or a wife. Fall in love with your husband or wife. Fall in love with your children. They are worth more than the pleasure of sin. The pleasure of sin is deceptive. It will deceive you into thinking you can live a double life. You can't. You really can't. What secret pleasure do you have? What secret pleasure do you have that your husband or wife or family know nothing about? It will destroy you. Sin is deceptive. Sin is destructive. Numbers 32, 23. Be sure your sin will find you out. Be absolutely certain that your sin will find you out. Be sure your sin will find you out. In conclusion, as we move forward, the need to be vigilant has never been greater. As we stand on the cusp of 2024, the trends of global unity, technological advancement, apostasy and moral decay are more than mere observations. They serve as cautionary signposts, urging us to reflect, discern and act based on our convictions. While the world may veer towards a new order, believers must find strength in their faith and scripture. We must remain steadfast, nurturing our relationship with God and reinforcing the foundations of our beliefs.